there. <coughs> Let me go check it. Is it already on? Facebook Live? Yeah, we are now. Okay. We are on live. Woohoo. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer Sheehan. To see all shows, go to the Jennifer Sheehan Show.com. And so you guys have a treat because we're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff like food. Yay. <laughs> I know. Food and dermatology. That's a good fit. <laughs> and photography. And, oh, yeah. Let's not, let's not forget Carmine. <laughs> so I want to introduce everyone, first of all. So we have Jennifer DeRamsey, Dr. Jennifer DeRamsey. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Awesome dermatologist in Frisco, Texas. And then we've got Kent. Rathbun, That's chef, it. yes, awesome, awesome chef, and then we have Carmine Ledestri, my co-host. Hey, hey, thank you for being here, Carmine. I you know, I have to run and get your card this uh, time. I, I came know. sliding in last week. You guys wouldn't believe it. He came in like in the nick of time because I opened the camera on the way over here and I go, oh, the card isn't in there. Oh no! How did that happen? And I was going to be just on time. And so I was like, what do I have to pay you? Since you're a photographer, do you have one in your car? <laughs> so he didn't. One time I didn't. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. Y'all are cute. You make a good team. Ah, uh, here, <laughs> fist bump. Huh. He my, does. He's funny. My sis. Yeah, yeah. My elder sis. Aw. Oh. 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 Ouch. Oh. oh. That, it sounded better I, in your, she sounded know, better in your I, head I, than when you actually said yeah, it. Yeah. Huh? Right? Yeah, one of those. I okay. always tell him, don't sit next to me because if you say something, I will smack you. So by the mm -hmm. end of the radio show, he's going to have a red arm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I got to switch sides. I oh whack him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we do make a good team. I, I appreciate having you. I appreciate you too. Because you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's like struggling to find something nice to I, say. I, you know, I just, I think I cussed the last show, so I'm trying not to do that. Uh, you know? I told him, look, you need to pick your words a little bit better. <laughs> I, I was told to say dang. Oh. Yeah, hit that G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have that little thing that makes noises? Yeah, I got the buzzer over there. Oh, yeah. good. So in case Jenny says something wrong. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I'll do my best. <laughs> it is yeah. Friday afternoon, we so. We got the bleeper? Yeah, yeah, we got a bleeper. I'm the anymore. mother bleeper. Yeah. See, yeah, it oh, sounded, sounded dirty, but it wasn't. Do not get him started, please. Oh, my gosh. So I want to talk about... There we go. It was a gong show. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about food first. Like, who doesn't want to talk about great food from a chef, right? Totally. Awesome food all the time. Let's talk. Yeah. So tell me, first of all, how long have you been a chef? You know, I started cooking uh, with my parents at five years old. Wow. I took my first job in a restaurant at 14. I had my first chef's position at 21, and I'm now 57. So you do the math. Few I've been years. cooking a long time. It's right. the only thing I've ever done in my life, and I love it. I forgot to tell you could bring Tracy with you. That would have been great to have your wife with you. She, uh, yeah, well, somebody had to hold down the fort, right? She, yeah, somebody's got to hold down the fort, and we don't. I don't know if we. How, how long is this show? An hour. <laughs> <laughs> what are you baby, saying? I love, she I talks love a lot. You, baby, I love you. Baby. Oh, oh you know your wife saw my Trace. Facebook, so she's probably going to see this, right? Right on. And, and you broke the cardinal rule already. You didn't bring any food with you. True. I hey. forgot to ask him. I could have brought some awesome food. Oh, oh, next week bad. he's coming back on. Okay, yeah. Do you want to okay. come back on the show? Bring Tracy Absolutely. this time. Okay, payment is I'll, food. Payment food. is food. That's easy. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Jenny's like, I'm in. Yeah, I want to go on well, that show, too. I, I skipped lunch to get over here, so y'all are making me hungry. I know. I'm hungry, too. Go. Oh, my gosh. So what is your favorite thing to make? Well, so uh, that's that's a question I get asked all the time. You know, what's your, I'm not what's the your only favorite one. food? No, you know. <laughs> 
I could tell you, you know, I grew up in Kansas City, and so I, I grew up with a dad who loved to cook outside on the grill. So I'm like, you know, if you give me a grilled piece of meat or fish, mm. I'm super happy. Casey mm. Barbecue. Casey Barbecue or, you know, Kansas City Strip. I mean, nice. I, you know, I tell people if it's the last day on the planet for me, I'm going to have a Kansas City Strip. Really? Oh, yeah. Ribeye's yeah. my, my favorite cut. Yeah, Ribeye Strip, either one. They're all yeah, good, man. Right I love there. them all. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, coming to Texas – Texas is awesome because, you know, Texas is a big meat meat state and, you know, very meat centric, but it's got the spice too. So yeah. I like the spice added to it. Right. right. Yeah. That's where this, his secrets come in. That's right. The secrets <laughs> and the spice. Yeah, I could tell you these things, but I'll have to kill you. See, <laughs> see you, thought, you thought I was going to say something Never wrong. Never mind. <laughs> That's a joke. That's good. He's Where's good with the cleaver. Go? Yeah. Mm, that's right. Gong. Yeah, right. <laughs> There you exactly. go. <laughs> He's my entertainment. Right. That's why I keep him around. <laughs> now, you, you, uh, um, are we allowed to uh, talk about your past res- uh, restaurants? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let's go down the uh, chronology. You had what first? Well, so, you know, I came to Dallas in 1990 and I started working at the mansion on Turtle Creek with Dean Faring. Right. Uh, two years later, I That's took my the brother. Sh- yeah. Took, uh, two years later, I took the chef's position at the Melrose Hotel. And mm. at the time, it was just purchased by a company out of Bangkok, Thailand. So, I got to spend a lot of time in Thailand. Uh, yeah. I worked in that restaurant and hotel for three and a half years, and then I opened 1717 at the Dallas Museum of Art. Yeah. And then in 1999, I opened Abacus. Mm. In 2000, Not Henderson area. Yeah. 2001, I opened the Jaspers in Plano, just right down the street. Had from many, oh, yeah, I forgot had that. Had been many, there so many, many meals times. there with uh, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny Caros. <laughs> Johnny Caros, yeah, crazy Johnny Caros. Absolutely. Shout out. Mm. Yeah, shout out Johnny. Um, and then we opened Abacus down in the Woodlands in Houston, then one in Austin, and then uh, one in Richardson. Did not know that. Yeah, no, I didn't know that either. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, so I've been to the Jasper, Jaspers in Plano, Shops at Legacy, many, yeah. many times. That one's and, still going, right? It's still going, but I'm no longer a part of those restaurants. Right. Yeah. So right. I, I exited the company two years ago, and my wife right. and I have Shinsei Restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just opened a second Shinsei at the D uh, terminal out of DFW. And Which we just, terminal? So I can make sure I fly out of there. <laughs> terminal D, yeah. Uh-huh. So okay. if you're heading the is international, is it D the most popular is, one? Is that the international one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome I've been there terminal, beautiful. Um, and what and kind then, of food is there? Uh, so Shinsei is, you know, Japanese sushi bar and Pan Asian mm-hmm. kitchen, which Yummy. is uh, also the same as Emoto, which we just opened two months ago down in Victory Park. Hey, and, and your shirt, your chef uh, shirt says Emoto on it. Right. That's oh, it. Okay. What does that mean? So Emoto is Japanese for little sister. Okay. And so we also have uh, Republic Restaurant, which is just north of Forest on Inwood Road, and it's kind of a Texas-centric bourbon and and uh, Texas kind of cuisine neighborhood bar and restaurant. Really awesome. And then we also have Lover's Seafood, uh, just on Lover's Lane around the corner from Shinsei. I've been there. And then uh, we're getting ready to start catering uh, with uh, catering by Chef Kent Rathbun. And oh, so, really? Yeah, that's awesome. So Frisco can get some of your cooking. We will drive north. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You know, Frisco's sure. kind of the place to be. We well, you know we used to do a lot of catering. <laughs> Says the girl that lives sure. in Frisco. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So like, no. bring, bring one of those up this way. We can do that. We yeah. can do that. We 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 uh, you know you call we travel. That's okay. awesome. Okay. You're quite the entrepreneur. You say you're just a chef, but you, you're a lot more than a chef. That's a lot of places to manage. You know, and it lots is. of diverse uh, diversity. You know, diversity well, of types yeah. of food. That's, that's what makes it fun, yeah, right? That's so I mean, awesome. uh, I've been very fortunate in my career to be able to do some cool things, and and uh, one of them is not having to stick within one cuisine. So yeah. I get I get the luxury of being able to kind of play around with food. So yes. yeah, that's did you nice. do any of those like? Shot. My husband is like Food Network crazy. I go, can oh. you learn and like cook for me? Because like I really don't have time. I love to cook. That's actually yeah. most people don't know that about me, but that's one of my hobbies besides taking pictures. What? That's like nice. I love uh, cooking. Okay. Shut up, Carmine. She I know you're gonna a say bowl something. Of Fruit Loops for me one day. No, <laughs> not a bowl of wow. Fruit Loops. Oh my the first slap. <laughs> sure. So she you know picked that all the stars out. <laughs> my uh, my uh, stepmom growing up could have been a gourmet. <laughs> Excuse me. It could have been a gourmet chef. She was so good. Yeah. And uh, when I graduated high school, she actually showed me how to cook. So my mom cooked more like, oh gosh, fried stuff and not kind of the cook. 
Yeah, yeah. Not really the stuff Shake that I bake. eat. Not the stuff that's going to keep yeah. me in my size eight. So I don't really eat like that. But my um, my stepmom could have been a gourmet cook. And so when I left to join the army, she gave me a photo album full of all her recipes. How awesome. Um, that was like one of the best presents anyone's ever given me because she was so good. I might yeah. have to take a look through that book one it's day. Like, yeah, there's like secrets like company yes. chicken and... Uh, lasagna and just oh, different. Those are invaluable. The lasagna is probably not as good as Carmine since he is Italian, so no. I have to give it to him. Right. But like my company chicken and a few things, mm-hmm. nobody else knows Red that gravy. recipe. <laughs> That's so awesome. when people come over, it's called company chicken because you make it for when company comes. And then do you know how many people have tried to make that dish and they can't make it? I'm also secret. That's uh, awesome. You have wow. to be my friend and come to my house. Do you want me to make it for you? I'm I'm waiting for the you invitation. Like Let me give yeah. you a card before. All I right, leave. I'll make you a deal right here and right mm-hmm. now. You cook for me, and I'll cook you my company chicken. I'm doing it. Deal? Oh. Tell me we'll, when. We'll do a, a fist bump when. on it. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, deal. Perfect. I'm thinking I'm getting the better end of the deal. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think right. you are. I don't know. The company chicken might be good. <laughs> I don't know. You better uh, You better watch it. He might take the rights to that and open a restaurant. <laughs> right. That's, right. Okay. That's a good name. It. It's the company here. chicken. We'll call it company chicken. You would, yeah. you would yeah. have to put Jennifer's company chicken, and then we have a deal. That I does not sound nearly as good, though. I know, right? Oh, no. It doesn't. Has Jenny been hanging out with you too much, Carmine? Oh, my Carmine? gosh. Yeah, sorry. She's, she's on the money. Dude. Yes. She's on the money. i got to so, give you a hard time, girl. I know, of course. So uh, <laughs> you've got all these restaurants. What's, what's, what's your dream restaurant? I know, I know you're loving what you're doing, working with your wife, right? Absolutely. And a, That's the right no thing No hesitation. To say. He's no, good. I'm very and, quick. How long have you been married? Uh, oh, 17 geez. years. I was going to say, he's okay, up there. Wow. Like that. Quick, let's see how quickly he answers this. And who's the boss at the restaurant? Always her. Well, Are you see, he didn't even hesitate. I do whatever I'm told. Good. I just show up. That's man. Good. I shake hands and kiss babies. Go wipe oh. those tables down. You are so <laughs> wipe those tables. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I do. Funny. So yeah. do people mess up your name? Because I messed it up forever. I didn't know that it was Wrath. Oh, yeah. It's so funny because even, you know, all the hostesses, there's great stories about that in all the restaurants. Yeah. So, hey, your best friend. Uh, that knows you by Ken Rathburn, and, <laughs> and that knows That's you. Used to, yeah, I mean, it's so. So funny. when I call, I know how to pronounce it, so I'm good. So they'll be like, maybe she yeah. really does know him. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> Rathbun, and uh, by the way, I'm very happy to be able to use that today. So right. That's <laughs> right. a whole other story. Well, he's got food in his name. He's got a <laughs> bun. Uh-huh. I know. That's What's right. the odds That's of that? That food's in your name. Exactly. That's good. Put yeah. some barbecue in there. Barbecue bun. Burger. So did you do any of that? So the the network, we were talking about the the restaurant, Top Chef, and and Bobby Flay, and all that. I watched that a lot, actually. You didn't do your homework on me. Oh, dear. Because I could have sworn you did something on there, and I thought you won something. I did a little thing called Iron Chef America. You did? And did you win it? I rocked Bobby Flay's house. You did. (laughs) Oh, another fist bump. So I didn't see that episode and I watched them like my husband and kid. Like that's what we do for family time. It's so ridiculous. So battle elk. And by the way, if you're a Texan, this and you're a hunter, this is what you should be watching for sure. Because we, my my brother and I were on there and uh, we did very well. It was a great day, but we're our, our uh, ingredient was elk. Wow. And it was, oh, wow. Uh, it was, was pretty cool. Was the hunt one. on the show, cool. too, or not? The hunt was not on the show, yeah. <laughs> That's Somebody gross. Had, they had to that go was, catch it and then yeah. kill it. It was oh, yeah. only an hour, dude. We only have an hour. So. <laughs> wow. A couple of quick, you know, B-roll shots, you know. Yeah. Yeah, be real. But uh, that probably would have pissed off a few television. people or something so like that. So is that like on your, because I've been on your website before, is that on your website that you beat Bobby Flay? Because that's a big deal for people like me that watch the Food Network. You know, it's uh, I, I'm not sure if it's on the website currently. In fact, I'm getting ready to launch a new website at okay. uh, chefkentrathbun.com. But it's not up yet, but it's coming. But yeah, it'll be on there. I mean, that's that was one of my brother and I's big, big days. I mean, it yeah. was a game changer in every way. And How I, long ago was that? Was say. Oh my gosh. Uh, seven years ago, maybe. Yeah. Okay, seven, so I haven't been years. watching him that long. Maybe I've been longer. watching about a year. Yeah. Okay. No, Battle Elk, it was, uh, it was a great day for us, man. Big game changer. Can anyone go on there and would it say Battle Elk on there? Just Google Battle Elk, man. Okay. Come right up. I'm going to go watch it. Absolutely. Awesome. That yeah. is, you know, it's a big deal because he's, I think he is so great and like what he says, he brings the flavor. I think that's why he wins because he's winning things that he doesn't even know how to make and it just has to be the spices and him just knowing that to mm-hmm. beat all of these people. Well, like what, 75% of the time he wins? He, he wins a lot. In fact, um, when, we, when we battled him, he had a hundred and nine or so episodes, and like a hundred and 
two of them he won or he he won wow we had one that says a lot yeah. with him and uh you know so we we took him down on the first hey, time it was I, pretty awesome i think it says a lot awesome. about your, your your taste buds you know to, to to eat something and go this is what it needs to make it right right and you could yeah. you could have a piece of elk from utah and then a different piece <laughs> of elk from nevada and they're going to taste completely different to know you know to 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 flavor it correctly and that's yeah. an art you know food totally. is fun man i'll tell you that you know the the hardest thing is not making uh rash decisions about someone's opinion of your food because that's you know as a younger chef i used to do that when we opened abacus man i was running around like a chicken with my head cut off because somebody would say well you know i thought that was a little salty and then the next night they go hey, i thought it was a little bland and you you know you're knocking yourself out trying to figure it out at some point, as a chef, you just have to go. Look, this is what I think is right, yeah. and you have to you have to kind of go with your gut, you know. Yeah, because yeah, everybody's taste is different. Some people yeah. say uh, uh, a certain amount of spice is, you know, uh, an eight, and another person it's a two. Exactly. So you, it's all relative. Yeah, it's all relative, and and you've been doing it so long, so you go, no, I know what a two is, and I know what a ten is, and right this on. is this is what I'm going to put out. But I think that that's sage wisdom in general for everything. Because what sure. you just said resonates with me too. You know, you want to please everybody, but some people are going to expect this and some are going to expect the other extreme. And right. you just got to learn as a business owner. It's, you got to do you. It's very gray. Yeah, there's totally. Not, there's not what a school lot of did you go to? How did you learn? I mean, I know. So your mom obviously taught you a little if you started at, you said five? Yeah, I started cooking with my parents at five years old, but I'm happy to say that I, I am not actually formally trained. Oh, that's cool. I started cool. working in a restaurant when I was 14. Do you guys remember Sambo's? You're probably too young for this. Is that a local restaurant? Sambo's used to be a, a nationwide restaurant that was kind of like Denny's. Okay. And it was a 24-hour restaurant, and they got into a big you know, racial lawsuit over the word Sambo's. Oh, geez, yeah, I didn't even think of that. And I mean, it was it was crazy, but it was it was where I started working, and it was a great training ground because you know at any point in time somebody could order you know bacon and eggs, a BLT, fried chicken, and a steak all at the same time, and so wow. it was really right. a good training ground for people to learn. Wow. You know? And now it's Denny's, right? Now it's kind of <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> Denny's, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's been a long time since I've been to Denny's. I can't even remember yeah. how long. So ramble off of your websites before we go to break here. So uh, we have a Moto Dallas. Uh, we have a moto underscore Dallas as our Instagram, and then we have a moto Dallas as Facebook. And then, of course, my website is not launched yet, but it will be launched under chefkentrathbun.com. So that's great that it's your name. I think that's very smart for all of us business owners when it comes to our business to have yeah. our name and domains and all Personalize that. Personalize it. Absolutely. Yeah. Who are we going to talk to when we come back? We're going to talk a little bit more food. Okay. And then talk dermatology. <laughs> well, you know, well. Since we've got only two well, guests today, which is great. I did that on purpose. But anyway, we're going to go back. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back. All right. So we're still on Facebook live. Got it. Okay. So All still right. on Facebook live. So yeah, the great thing is I have two to four people at a time. A lot of times I do have four guests. Well, one person, I don't think one person would comfortably be able to talk for a whole hour. You know what I mean? You can. That's kind of a lot. Well, so can you. Don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh at him too. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yes, uh, you could. I think, I think of, you could. If you talked about right now, there's about 20 people going, maybe 220 people going, Oh, did he just say he couldn't do that? No, right, right yeah. No, you could talk about food all day long. I get yanked off stage all the time. Are you kidding me? You could talk yeah, I've about never food had that all problem. day, yeah. They told exactly. me, you know, what happens, Jennifer? I think it was my um, second show. The first show, I was very nervous, but the owner of the radio show, Mark Warner, was in here. And then I had uh, Carmine, and I had a bunch of my vendors, my website guy and my graphic designer. So I felt very comfortable because there was no skin in the game. <laughs> They're all <laughs> people I work with. So I was cool about it. Uh, but then the second one, so I'm thinking, okay, I can do this. You know, this is no problem. I can do a Facebook Live and get 4,000 views. This is cake, right? Well, then the second one, one person didn't show up. One person was 30 minutes late or 20 minutes late. And another person was in another office back there. And he was back there looking for the guest. I go on live and I have no one to interview. <laughs> Are you serious? She's, what did you do? Elk, oh, elk my in the headlights. oh, my <laughs> God. I was, just like, no. I was just like, hi, I'm in. Jennifer Sheehan. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to say, but something good. <laughs> That's I came too sliding funny. and I'm like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> let me, let yeah, me explain to you where we're shoot. at. Yeah. Oh so he goodness. got in here and I was like, okay, get over here. Let's talk. Yes. And so we just started yeah. talking. 
thing. And then we decided finally, after that, right? Yeah. Then finally the guy came in the back and then of course we had to get him situated and the person late came in. The other person never showed up. And I was like, wow. okay, this is my show and it's going by my rules. If you are not in here, sit it down, seated with your microphone and everything on by one o'clock when we go live, you're not yeah, coming on my in. show because <laughs> it was so stressful. Yeah. Like I, I was really freaking out. And, but, and we decided to have backup topics just her and i yes. that we could talk for an hour, an hour. like that because you never me. know people get in accidents you know if yeah, something yeah. happens something. i make sure i give myself enough time to get this show that if i get a flat tire or something i can uber right <laughs> so that's you good. know what i mean yeah so that i can get here because i have to be here so you never know if carmine i mean we're both really responsible but what if something i've happens? never missed a show not not no yeah. no now now without you know not without notice. letting me know yeah, yeah exactly. so not, like no, no. and yeah. I don't do that either but yeah, you never yeah, know exactly. so that's why now I'm prepared if I had to talk for an hour I would but that would be kind of boring mm. I don't know I bet you could figure it you out think? yeah, yeah. I, think I am pretty good under pressure oh. yeah totally <laughs> I would think you'd have to be in that situation right, right. Yeah. absolutely a lot of people are afraid of live like I just talked to someone yesterday I met with uh, an old client of mine that wants to come back on and I told her the radio's live and she's like I don't know if I want to do that I go it's easy it's just us talking and having fun that's it that's so it. I think going back when they look at the video and see that it's just a fun conversation yeah you know but so sushi, so tell me about this sushi. So, you know, I could eat sushi breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Me too. You Love too? Me, me too. Well, not, not only is it such a popular cuisine. <laughs> but, you know, Do you like it too? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, me too. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's art. It's so artful it too, is. right? I mean, it's gorgeous. And, uh, you know, the thing about sushi is, uh, you know, a lot of foods have a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of you know, play in it in terms of time and how fresh it can be but sushi has got to be awesome premier food fish all the time because you know it's raw and you have to you have to have something that's really really a spectacular product you know right so, so it's that's one of the stuff. biggest keys with sushi is that it's fresh and high quality right absolutely you always want to eat in the sushi bar that's busy <laughs> you want to be you want to be so in a sushi true. bar that's passing fish in and out very quickly yeah absolutely yeah he's taking my picture Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice taking picture. your picture. Yeah. Make sure your mouth's closed. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's a, a definite advantage having uh, my photographer as my co-host. <laughs> he knows when to take it, and when not to. Yeah, he does, and yeah. he takes great pictures. So I just bring my camera along, and it's it's awesome. So yeah, so with the sushi, feet. go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so with the sushi, what what are some of the things? So a lot of people do sushi, and oh my gosh, all sushi is not the same. It just isn't. No. Like are there some grades? Is really like there are steak? Absolutely. Okay, so I didn't oh, know really? that. Yeah. So uh, sushi sushi grade fish, uh, you know, is usually a one like tuna. Uh, a, we get a grade one tuna or a sushi grade one tuna, and then you know there's there's tuna out there that's grade two and three, and and they're still nice and they're still fresh. But you know, a lot of times what people don't really realize is, is it has less to do with the freshness of the product as it does the fat content. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah, so I, I actually went to a fish market up in New York a few years ago. In fact, my brother and I were up doing some stuff for the Food Network, and we went uh, and did a big tour of Fulton's Fish Market. Mm. And it was really interesting because they were teaching us all about the fat content. And that's what, you know, when the Japanese chefs go down there, they're not looking at the perfectly beautiful red piece necessarily, although that's sometimes the piece that gets chosen. They're scraping a knife across there, and they're looking for the fat bead that comes up on that because that fat is flavor, it's it's moisture, and it's kind of like the marble is you know, the marbling mm -hmm. on the absolutely, steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. that's why I like the ribeye so much because I mean I I do love a fillet, but you know that ribeye got a little bit of that marbling in there. That's where all that flavor comes from. Absolutely, man. You couldn't give me sushi growing up. You couldn't force me to me eat. Me either. I mean, that was poison. No. <laughs> I, that, not until, you know, they say your taste buds change two or three times they in your do. life. Right. You know? Not until a little, I, I didn't have sushi until it was like um, after college, I guess. I mean, yeah. it was probably I think 27 I didn't or something. Like the last, yeah. Don't you think in the last 20 years, like, oh, yeah. sushi bars have exploded yeah. in sure. popularity? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it used to be oh, sort yeah. of a... It used to be sort of a, a, a food that a lot of people really didn't get around, but now it's like everywhere, and people love it. 
you know. They so love tell it. me yeah, some of them, like, have you been able to obviously just create some very different things? Because a lot of sushi bars that I go to, and I eat sushi a lot, I know which ones, mm-hmm. especially up here in Collin County, are the best and sure. freshest. And I steer clear. If, it, if I go in and it smells fishy, I'm not going in. Yeah. I'm not eating yeah. anything don't, in there. Don't That's get sushi at the Sunoco. And I'm yeah. not really big on the <laughs> conveyor belt thing because I don't know how long it's been there. I want it right. like made fresh, and I'm really like weird about nothing fishy in my mouth. And I think I think that's shut up, Carmine. I just visualized <laughs> that was still a little <laughs> that could go bad, really. Uh, okay, we're back to the sushi. Yeah. So yeah, so, we, we, we're so back. there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sushi that's sort of what you would expect, like typical sushi dishes from sushi bars. But I think that most sushi restaurants are trying to create some really cool dishes. And for you know, for instance, we have a dish that we just called the Sophia Roll. Named after my good friend's daughter. Okay? okay. And the reason why we named it the Sophia Roll is because she loves the Brussels sprouts that we serve at Shinsei. So we thought, what if we did a Wagyu beef roll with the crispy Brussels sprouts? And we did it. And like the first time we did it, everybody that ate it went, that's got to go on the menu. And right. now it's wow. one of the top sellers in two really? months. It's oh, crazy. Cool. 11 year old got so a roll named after her, right? Yeah, yeah. She's 16, but now okay. my 11 year old is like, Dad, when. Yeah, when, when do I get a roll? roll? When, 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 roll? Do, when do we have a Garrett roll? And I right. Go, Where's the chocolate pudding roll, Dad? Exactly. Yeah. Well, she, she's, a, she's a little pastry chef, so I think we're going to work on a, a, a Your really daughter cool. Is? Yeah. How many children do you have? I have two. I have a son, Max, that's 15, and my daughter's going to be 12 in November. Aww. Yeah. I think the last time I saw them, they were two and three or something. I'm telling you, man, they a long grow time. so fast. It's crazy. They do. Yeah, I they can't do. believe my kid's about to be 17 and driving. I hate it. Mm. I'm all, I don't care if you're 6'3 and 200 pounds. You are my baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took my son out driving on Sunday. I took him from our house down near Lovers and Inwood, and we drove all the way to Plano. Oh, yeah, because you're teaching him to drive because he's 15, right? How scary is that? He got out of the car and he goes, Dad, that freaked me out. (laughs) He goes, you do that every day. He goes, that is... Did he get him on the tollway? Tollway to 635, 635 to Central. Wow. First time he drove? No, no, no. Okay. He's been driving a lot, but never on the highway. Okay. On the so like, he's yeah. like, Whoa, Those curves. That is you get at that Trinity yeah. curve there and people are going sideways. Well, and, and then you got, you know, he's going... I'm doing 70, Dad, and everybody's past me like we're sitting still. I said, welcome to Dallas. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> well, I hear a lot of teenagers these days are not as uh, you know, not as anxious to start driving. Oh, it's true. I can't it's tell true. you They don't want to get their it's license. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is kind of scary. Like, our son, we, we're just now, he's like, Mom, it's been seven months. Can I get a toll tag? I'm like, I don't want you on the tollway. Yeah. Oh, he's no. in a little bubble going to school, going to the gym. Yeah. Like, he's really, I think the farthest he goes is Stonebriar Mall. So and so he's not on the tollway because you got a Camaro. It's four cylinder, but it's turbo. And we're like, no, I don't. So the first time he got on the tollway, that really scared him as well. Yeah. So, but there's nothing. It is more scary to teach a kid to drive than to go to Iraq. Oh, okay? it's, it's crazy. <laughs> like I was scared for my life. I told my husband, I go, baby, I can't do it. I really, I, you're gonna have to do it because I was just, I was that scared. Well, so how and, did you feel? Did that really just scare you? So there's been a couple of times where I kind of got a little wigged out. But, I mean, most of the time I'm, like, way ahead of him. So I'm kind of talking him on to the next turn and the slowdown and all that. But there's some times where something happens where a normal driver would need to react. And so he, being a new driver, you know, you're kind of hoping that he does the right thing. How many times have you grabbed the wheel? <laughs> Uh, I've grabbed the wheel a couple times. <laughs> really? I, have, I have grabbed the wheel a couple you times. You have? Yeah. Do you step on the imaginary brakes? Uh, I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we funny. disconnected those a long time ago. You know, that yeah. is so funny. So yeah. this is so funny. So Jared and I, my husband's out of town, and Jared and I are driving to church, and I'm letting him drive my car. And I have a, a big SUV, so I'm having him drive, and there's, you know, the bikers every Sunday. Right. So the biker is on the right-hand side. And so uh, I'm like, oh, God, please don't let him hit the biker. <laughs> oh my, I'm getting, like, really worried. And, and so I said, Jared, you need to look behind you and get over one, you know what I mean, to get to avoid the biker. And so he turns his head, but he turns the wheel with him. Oh, no. But I think the wheel was going the other way right towards the biker, like really close to the curb and close to the biker. And uh, he turned around too long. Yeah. And then when he went that way, it turned the, the wheel. And I yelled, Jared! And it scared him so bad. And he straightened up and he goes, well, you're the one that told me to turn around. I'm, oh, all, yeah. I'm all for a second, not for like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I that was probably thing. really scary. Austin, are we back on already? 
I didn't hear the commercial going you, back You didn't on. break. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're back on. Okay. <laughs> it was we're never a break. We can break. Yeah, it's cut in. No problem. So we're back on the air. <laughs> okay, so good. So um, anyway, so the different sushis that you make, uh, so you've got that one roll. What is another popular one that so, you make? So uh, we just created another roll called the, uh, the Black Dragon Roll. And uh, so at Emoto, we have a hand-painted dragon on the ceiling of the private dining room that's awesome. It is a beautiful piece. I can't wait to see it. At, at, where's that location? It's, uh, it's right down at Victory Park. Okay. Uh, 2400 uh, Victory Park Avenue, right down by the American Airlines Center. And if you haven't been down there lately, this whole new thing they're doing down there is insane. I mean, I know most of y'all are up north. Okay. Yeah, I'm I down got there. It, that's but a, that's get a on the well, this show away. goes down nice. there, by the way. It goes yeah. everywhere. I'm coming uh, in for dinner tonight. Come uh-huh. on. I'm um, I want to be like I know I know Ken Rothberg. Ken Rothberg. <laughs> <Ken Rathburn. Fun. laughs> so anyway, we decided that we decided that we wanted a dragon roll. <laughs> so uh, have you ever had uh, Chinese black forbidden forbidden rice? Do you know what that is? Yeah. No. So, oh, you do. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. So it's it's kind of like it, I kind of equate it to like a wild rice. It's kind of chewy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So we do half forbidden rice, half sushi rice, and we make a little cake, and they're deep fried, so oh, they're boy. crispy. And then on top of that is a little uh, yuzu uh, avocado. And then on top of that is a um, yellowtail, uh, kind of uh, yellowtail salad uh, with Thai chili, serrano chili, and habanero chili. So it's a little spicy, but it is beautiful and it is tasty. Wow. The Um, black dragon roll. Is that an appetizer or is that a full roll? It's a full roll. Okay. Yeah, six pieces. It's awesome. Wow. And then do you have the traditional stuff for those people that don't like to venture out? Yeah, and that's... Fish that's, sticks? That's... Uh, <laughs> Not fish sticks. <laughs> well, we could, we could do some you. tempura fish. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to call it a fish stick, I guess you could. Uh, you know, that's, that's the great thing about Shinsei and Emoto is that uh, you don't have to be a sushi lover to go there and dig the food. I mean, we got lots of fantastic things coming out of the, out of the kitchen for sure. So come down and check it out because it's, yeah. there's all kinds of offerings for I sure. Can't yeah. I can't Honey, wait. Honey, if you're listening, I want to go on a date night. Uh-huh, me too. <laughs> me too. I want a date night too. Yeah. I, no. I'm going to take Beverly tonight. We're in town tonight, so Are for you? sure. Yeah. Okay. You'd love after, you after the kids' volleyball game, we're coming in, so it'll be after eight. Okay, perfect. Is it hard to get in? Uh, well, like right now, you know, we're in the middle of summer and... We got restaurant week going all over Dallas. So oh, right gosh, now I forgot about restaurant. Come, but I can tell you, once we get into the fall, it's going to be yeah. a little more difficult. But I'll get you guys in. I mean, y'all know right. We know people. Now. We yeah, know you. Know You're our bestie. Please. Yeah. Totally. Are you, you going to be down juice. at the restaurant tonight? Uh, actually, I have two events that I have to do. I'm doing a catering event uh, with Richard Chamberlain for the Coca-Cola. I love Richard, Richard Chamberlain. You yeah. know, I've known him. We've gone to the same church, and we were in Bible study for 10 years together. Richard is one of my best friends. I've he known Richard so forever. Awesome. You, you know that portrait He's in his amazing. restaurant right next to the bathroom? Yes, you took I it? I shot that. You did? Oh, really? Oh, 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, the kids are in college now. I shot that a long time ago, so I've yeah. known Richard forever. Him and too. his wife awesome. are amazing. And what's yeah. the manager's name? I just forgot. Jeff. 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 Jeff Barker. Yeah, I love Jeff Barker. That's it. Yeah, I think he's a partner with Richard actually. He is. He is. He gave him a piece of the pie. Yeah. Yeah. No pun intended. I love both his <laughs> chop house and his fish market. I awesome go there frequently. Many cigars in that back room. Yeah. I you think go. you need to come up at least a belt line on the tollway. Come on. Uh well that could happen. You never know. You never that know. could happen. That could happen. Yeah. I mean some I know other someone that can help tours. you get the Collin County market. There you go. Well, you, <laughs> aren't you helping me with that right now? Yeah, yes, exactly. absolutely. I mean <laughs> people <laughs> we will go to Dallas. Don't get me wrong. There so, you go. So Chef Kent Rathbun. That's Everyone it. Everyone got it. And what's your website again? EmotoDallas.com. Love it. Love it. Love it. So we are going to talk with our amazing dermatologist who, yeah. and not only is she amazing dermatologist, beautiful on top of that. Oh, you're sweet. Cute Thank kids. You. Awesome husband. Her husband's an ER doctor. Mm. Yes. And she helped my son. My son had a little bit of acne. And you know what's interesting about Dr. Deramsey is that um, going to other dermatologists, what they didn't know was that not only did he have the acne just from being 16, the hormonal stuff, but he had yeast infection on top of it. Mm. And so they didn't, no one else knew that. And I didn't know why it wasn't clearing up. So, yeah. yeah so some- he wasn't eating enough sushi. <laughs> so, 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 complex, so, isn't it, Kent? Isn't I, it? I've heard that. I've heard that a visit to Shinsei or Emoto cures clears a lot of, clears it, right it does, a lot of it stuff. Does. I, I'll prescribe that next time. <laughs> Emoto <laughs> Dallas. Put on the script Absolutely. pad. She puts right? on. Yeah. Emoto totally. Dallas. What's that? Does, How insurance, many does insurance cover that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. We'll work it out after. That's funny. Yeah. So. Um, 
there, there's a yeast that lives on the skin that's called pterosporum. It, this is not the same kind of yeast, candida yeast, that causes other types of yeast infections that mm-hmm. have a bad reputation. Um, right. So this is different. The, I'm glad you clarified different that. Different kind of yeast. <laughs> right. Yes, it's called pterosporum, and everybody has it on their skin. It's part of our normal skin flora, but sometimes it can actually become a problem, and it can get inside of skin that's where the epidermal barrier has already been disrupted from something like acne or eczema or just overly dried out skin. Sometimes that yeast can jump inside and cause rashes, including something called seborrheic dermatitis, which is where you get kind of a dandruffy, itchy scaliness in your scalp. Um, Sometimes people will also get it on their eyebrows or the folds of the nose, um, even on the chest and under the arms. That's usually driven by that yeast that's overgrowing. And then our immune system will cause a reaction towards it. So then we get redness and scaling and irritation. Is that like a folliculitis? Or a- so folliculitis is any kind of inflammation of the hair follicles. So you're right. Pterosporum folliculitis is a common thing that we see where... See what it did you're so there you smart. Go. I didn't know you were so exactly. smart. Exactly. Go karma. <laughs> My do you have girlfriend any- does it for a living. <laughs> yes, so. yes. And I'm her product works for that, actually. Here and you're, and He's you're trying to work yeah. sushi in the folliculitis still. I know. I know. <laughs> well, we all got to eat and we all got skin, right? <laughs> so these are just <laughs> universal things that are part of our lives. As, as unglamorous as sometimes it is, uh, I love being a dermatologist because everybody needs one at some point, and Absolutely. you don't you don't know you need one until you need one, and when you need one, you need them like as soon as possible. A lot of times, because there's I nothing worse that, than being itchy or having a right? rash that makes you feel uncomfortable. So I appreciate that you know so much. I mean, like, so that's why I came to you because I'm like, okay, why aren't we able to figure this out? And then of course, Dr. DeRamsey is in the Best in Collin County magazine, yeah, thank you. and I got her in the front. So these are paid, so I couldn't get you closer than that. But after that was this. So everyone can see her article in the Best in Collin County magazine. But it was a two-page article. Oh, and I forgot to tell everyone, I took that picture. Watch out, Carmine. You might have some competition. (laughs) Was that that when you went to Hawaii and gave me the show? I know. You should have taken me with you. I probably could have written the article even more eloquently if I'd been there next to you. So that's it now. Yeah, but what what did you do? Right after you left, there was a volcano, and now it's being dropped. Ranch. I know, yeah. poor you Hawaii. Piss off the gods oh or my what? gosh. <laughs> What'd you yeah. do to King Kamehameha over there? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That's terrible. So this article was so such a great article because when I think of, okay, so when I put on Facebook, who's been to Hawaii? Because I just like going places one time because I have a very big bucket list. And so I want to do it right and I want to have fun. And so I normally ask people. So when I put on there both for Hawaii and then when we went um, to Mexico, I get like lists of people. Like I'm talking three or 400 people that say, oh, we went to Hawaii. Oh, we went to Mexico. So I'm thinking that this area, they go on vacation a lot. A lot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so with that, what are we all doing on vacation in all these beaches out in the sun? Totally. (laughs) Being naughty. So that's why I wanted her to write the article on vacationing and skincare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard because we're out and we've, you know, we've all taken time out of our lives and we have spent this money to go on a trip and we want to have a great time. But then our skin is in, in a lot of ways, if it starts to get irritated or we get a sunburn and kind of ruin the whole thing, especially if we're out in the sun a lot. So and bake. Yeah, totally. And you know, I, back to food. It's, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, um, you want to be a Phil and co-host? Uh, yeah, he's totally. good. He's good. I love it. Food next time though. We'll screw it up. <laughs> I'm going to let, I'm going to be like, Carmine's sick. That's good. Can you bring sushi? <laughs> Oh, yes. Come on, sorry, I forgot to tell you, we changed the show. Just changed the date. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I'll just be pissed I didn't get the food, that's all. <laughs> so what, you know, there's so many products on the, and I don't know if that uh, said it in the article or not, mm-hmm. uh, you know, out there that you know, when you go on vacation, is it, you know, a certain amount of SPF or a better product or a worse product? I mean, what do you, what do you say to use? Yeah, so normally if you're going to be out in direct sunlight for a, an hour or longer, I really like an SPF of at least 30, ideally closer to 50 if you can get it. Wow. Um, so, and any sunscreen, no matter what the SPF, it's really best to reapply it every 80 minutes, which is honestly one of the hardest sticking points for my patients because uh, it doesn't matter the SPF after 80 minutes, it's not necessarily going to be stable on your skin anymore. Even if it's waterproof. Mm-hmm. Wow. Even if it's that waterproof. That's going to be my, my next question is, you yeah. know, it seems like, I mean, it, it seems like it washes off, right? It I mean, does. It does. So I'm going to be honest with you. So I grew up in Texas. I laid out. I, the tin foil I the lifeguarded oil. just for the tan. Oh right. my gosh. I had the I best baby tan. Oh, we didn't goodness. know any better. Oh, I knew better. I just wanted to be <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, she didn't care. We totally. smoked. We yes. laid in the sun. We did everything. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, it's just kind of part of 
the culture, I guess, in Texas is people right. used to getting that sun-kissed tan. And so um, I even did tanning beds for a little while. So I always tell my patients I'm, I'm never judging. I'm just trying to help re-educate and maybe help right. you prevent things from getting any worse. So, yeah, sunscreen can be great. Sunscreen is, is not Hats. perfect, though. But, yeah, the best thing you can do is stay out of the sun, yeah. especially between the hours of 10 and 4, which is when the UV light is most intense. The next best thing is to wear sun protective clothing. So they make some really nice SPF clothing now, like Coolabar and REI, and there's quite a, different, quite a few different companies that make some really cute stuff. Um, so wearing sun protective clothing is going to be your next bet. And then after that would be sunscreen. And if you're going to wear a sunscreen, it's best to have one that's zinc oxide or titanium dioxide based. Um, that's because those are minerals. They're not chemicals. So the, most of uh, the other sunscreens out there are chemical sunscreens. And chemicals absorb into the skin. And they, when UV light hits it, it converts the light to infrared and you don't absorb as much of the light. But the problem is, is you've got to wait about 20 to 30 minutes for that to absorb into the skin. And a lot of people are not really waiting before they're going out and doing their activity. So that's kind of a they limitation. They spray at the pool and jump right in. Totally, totally. Yeah. It comes right off. Yeah, right. it really does. Yeah, okay. and zinc oxide is also a much better, more broad-spectrum protector against UVA. So we know that SPF rating is actually based off of UVB, which is related to how much uh, the UV light will cause a sunburn. But UVA doesn't burn us. It gives us a deep, dark tan, but it also breaks down our collagen and ages us. And most of the sunscreens aren't necessarily as good at preventing that kind mm. of UV light from transmitting. So zinc and what? Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Okay. So they're minerals and they sit on the surface of the skin. So you remember when we were kids and we had that looks like pink and blue streaks on your face with the, you, you've seen those crazy sure, yeah, sunscreens yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. big white. Um, so the, the problem with zinc and titanium is they're big molecules. It's literally like putting rocks on the surface of the skin that act like a shield, but they are kind of white and pasty. So it's, they're not very cosmetically elegant as we would say. Nobody's, they're not, that nobody's out. going to want to use it. So they have. So there, there, there are several of them out there now that are microsized. What about so you the wanna... sprays? Is spray better than lotion or vice versa? So what I say the is... sprays, I like, they usually go on dry and you're not all do. sticky and yeah. yucky. And... So most people, when they're using a spray, they're not putting on enough. So that's oh, the problem okay. is people, people underestimate the amount that they've put on. But what I say is I'd rather use a spray sunscreen than no sunscreen at all. If you're, if it's really an option for you to either do the spray more. or nothing, yeah. <laughs> or my favorite thing is actually there's a product that's called HelioCare that I love. It is actually like a pill form of sunscreen, so it really? is a really strong antioxidant that helps to reduce. If you do get a little bit of too much UV light, it basically helps to bind up those free radicals so that the free radicals that the UV light caused to form inside your cells can't bounce off the DNA and cause errors that could lead to cancer. You so want to dumb it down for us? Yeah, sorry. So you can really <laughs> take so a basically, pill? basically, if you deserve a sunburn because you missed a spot with your sunscreen, but you took the pill before you went out, you will most likely not get a burn at all. Mm -hmm. And I had nice. this happen to me the on, a, on a pill. vacation. It's awesome. Where do yeah. you get the pills from? I'm sure everybody wants to know. Um, you can get them at my office. You can buy them online. They're come usually, in for a visit. Yeah, yeah. come in for a visit what to is Legacy that website? Dermatology. It's www.legacydermatology.com. We're right here in Frisco off of Legacy and Warren. Not You're too really, far from really here. really, really close. Yeah. Yeah, we opened about a year and a half ago. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah I was at the grand opening. Yeah. So you know what's crazy? Fun. The grand opening was a year ago, I think today. It today. was a year Yeah, we happy opened in April, yeah, but our party was in August. Thank you. Yeah. For a little over a year the time now. has flown. We yeah, should go down to uh, a moto and, and uh, celebrate. Celebrate. We yeah. should. Sounds I thought like you'd a good never idea ask. Ask. Yeah. Everybody, the whole Please. city's invited. We're going to we'll go to back. commercial yeah. break and then we're going to come back talking a little bit more about some cosmetic dermatology. Okay. So. We're still live on Facebook. <laughs> I didn't hear y'all go on a break last night. Yeah, just cut in. So I just, just like added just cut time. in. We went on break. Yeah, just cut <laughs> in. So because, Thanks, or, Austin. or just start the clock and then I'll know because it was blinking zero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, why start I was the just, clock because I, I knew I too much time had passed and you didn't say anything. You should cut some with a commercial. Uh -huh. But anyway. So um, it, we had so much fun. So I took Jared in, and then she had her grand opening, and I went in there and got to meet her and her husband. And then, of course, of course, wanted her in the magazine because she's amazing. Oh, and so it was so cute. The supermodel. cutest thing she said, she could be a supermodel, seriously. No, no. So I remember her calling me one Saturday and saying, you know, we're going to do business eventually. She goes, but I want to be friends. Can we be friends? I'm like, I would love to be your friend. Yeah. So she's, like, really amazing. So I do consider her. That's Thanks. why it's, it's hard for me to call her Dr. DeRamsey. I call her Jenny because... I consider my friend. <laughs> yes, I consider you my friend too. <laughs> Thank you. Anything I do, it has to be real or honest. I'm just, I can't. Absolutely. And that's my favorite yeah. thing about you is that you are so real with everyone. And I still can't remember 
who saw you that went in there and it was some type of an event. You weren't their pay or their doctor, but they said, she's so sweet and so kind. We love her. Oh, but thanks. a lot of people say that about you. So you're thank getting you. a really good reputation around here. Good. Are you well, a Texas you. girl born and raised? Um, yes, born and raised and then left the state for a long time. So I grew up in a little town called Beeville down in South Texas and my mom and dad are still down there and, um, small town, about 13,000 people and was kind of ready to see the world. So I went off to college at Vanderbilt Mm -hmm. and then I did my medical school at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. My husband at the time we, we met when we were in college at Vanderbilt, he went to medical school up at GW, which is in DC. So we were in that corridor for about five years, and then we moved to Dallas together. So, kind of ventured out of state, found a man, got, a got an bit, education. Got some snow, and then came back. Yeah, home. totally. And totally. she has two of the cutest kids. I've oh seen the photos; they're adorable. God. Thank you. How old are they again? Uh, Alina just turned six, and my little boy Austin turns four tomorrow. Aww. Yes, and there, you guys made beautiful children. Thank you. I see we're pictures blessed. from the first day of school, yeah. and I'm like, oh my gosh, they are so cute. And I've been seeing on Facebook your husband in a lot of shots, doing a lot of different things. Yeah. Are you, is it a secret, or are you allowed to talk about any of that? Well, um, so no, it's not a secret. So my husband is a board certified emergency physician and he's amazing at what he does and so well respected and just calm and cool under pressure and does a, you know, does a great job where he is. He's been employee of the month at Baylor McKinney and he's just, he's a rock star, but, um, we also are super busy in our practice and he's always had an interest in aesthetics and lasers and things like that. So he is undergoing a lot of training right now and he's, he's actually been doing this kind of stuff with me kind of for me and with me for years, but he's kind of formally beginning to start treating some patients as well at our office, mostly taking advantage of some of the advanced technologies and lasers and treatments like that. So he's really good. So it's been, it's been fun to see and to watch him kind of grow into that creative side. So, and he's so kind and nice. Um, I've gotten to know him a few times when I went to her office, the grand opening, and then at the radio launch party we had. Yeah. Yeah, I got to meet him there the first time. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you met him for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. They, don't they make such a cute couple? Yeah, they do. Oh, thank like, you. You guys are really, really cute together. Thank you. He's my better half. He um How's his bedside manner like when you bring her hand on the pan in the, in the kitchen? Does he, <laughs> does he rush in and put the salve on there no, for you? No, <laughs> he's he so say, good. Suck it up? No, he's so good. He's so kind and so <laughs> gentle. Who treats and... the kids, you or him? Oh, oh. we both do. Yeah. <laughs> we both we, we, you're, we you're... both get our doctor hats on and we're like, yeah. I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. So or if come. they need stitches, I do them. But pretty much everything else, <laughs> he takes care woman. of. He's not ready for stitches, stitches or rashes. They're mine. But he could do stitches. Oh, totally. ER but I, I, I'm. I got a little more plastic surgery training. Right. So. <laughs> Although he's really good. Well, we're right after this little bebop. It's her favorite thing. It's hard not to dance, right? Except <laughs> no one else can hear the music. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Insane in the membrane, just like you. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer Sheehan. We're going to talk a little bit more with Dr. Jennifer DeRamsey yes. with Hi. her practice. Tell everybody your practice name again. It, we are Legacy Dermatology. And what's the uh, website? www.legacydermatology.com. And you take all insurance? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty okay. much all of them. I mean, there's a, there's a handful that are out there, but pretty much all of them. And you did yeah. my Botox. Yes, I did. And I messed up so bad because I still get a little bit nervous when it comes to needles. I don't know why. And, you know, I, I'm going to do the skin pen did with you. Move? Yeah. No, she did great. No. She but did we awesome. did a Facebook Live and I was so nervous. I got tongue tied and I forgot the name of her business. <laughs> oh, someone's coming at you with a needle. You know? I remember. Oh, and I was fine. like this, help. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you're doing a Facebook Live, you're live. You can't yeah. mess up. It's kind of like it's the radio there. show. It's, it's out true. there. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Don't you tenderize I mean, the meat with the needles? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. See there, crossover. Yeah. <laughs> it's called so a like, jacquard. Like that hardly ever happens. Like I'm normally like on and I don't forget a whole lot. But needles the, do a lot of things For to the people. life of me, I could not remember her business name. It's and fine. I was just like, it's fine. But it turned out cute. And you know what? Yeah. I think that when you're real with people, even when you forget something or don't do something perfect, then people are just like, okay, they are real. They're not perfect in what they do and what they say oh yeah i would rather be real and mess up i mean that's how in business every single one of us has messed up and i don't know why there's such a a big thing about being perfect because none of us are perfect nor will we ever be perfect so when we make a mistake we just own it and we make it right that's right Uh, and that's that's kind of how we roll at our practice as well it's just we sort of have a philosophy of 
we want to go against the grain of the way we sort of feel like healthcare has been drifting because um, with with lower and lower reimbursements from insurance companies and more and more pressure, more regulation, there's more money that that I as a small business and all of us who are private practitioner physicians, we have more money that we have to spend, but less money. They, they keep cutting what we're paid for the same amount of work. Right. So there's a pressure put on physicians to see more volume, see as many people as we can so that we can take some money home at the end of the month because right. we have there's a lot of people to pay before there's anything left over for us. Right. So um, I know that sounds kind of crazy because it used to be like back in the 80s, you know, physicians, it was like millionaires right. all, all over the place. But it's actually a really, it's, it's so a tough much. business. It really is. Yeah. So, um, but at our practice, we just don't want to be, we refuse to overload our schedules because right. I practiced like that for about five years and just wasn't really happy seeing right. extremely fast paced visits and just in and out and um, you know the, the short allotted amount of time that was there so we really believe strongly in treating people how we want to be treated and being very genuine and honest and I think it's it's actually been lovely to see that that is feasible and possible and right. that we've actually still been able to be very successful as a practice. Cause I, what we've learned is if you just treat people right and you respect them and you show them love and kindness and it's genuine, then they'll be happy and then they'll tell their friends and Absolutely. then, you know, so we, we yeah. may not, you know, we, we, we're not really in it for the money. We're in it for the old school practice of, healing and the art of that and the privilege of that because it's a sacred trust to be someone's doctor and we take it really seriously and um, but we also have a lot of fun so my staff is such a great group of people and we're all very passionate about taking great care of uh, of our patients and each other so well, it's your really staff me. is amazing like yeah your CEO, they did great? he tell you we had a long conversation no so your ceo of uh, we had just a long conversation i forgot why i was calling in oh darren and yes yes and so oh he called me and i called him back for i something. love darren and he is Hi, darren. so nice he's amazing so we talked for a long time so i feel like we're friends yeah now. and then i yeah. told him i go did i meet you when you come in when i came in he goes yeah i'm the one that took your credit card when your son came in i was like oh that was you yeah okay. totally it's so, funny because whenever we go places um together because he's this really tall guy and he's wearing his scrubs and i'm wearing my scrubs and they whenever we go wife. <laughs> no people are like oh hello doctor and they always talk to him oh, how and then they're like oh look it's a doctor and a nurse oh, and I'm like, oh dear oh it's okay yeah we were out <laughs> together recently and there was a woman that i guess her son had fallen down and i walked by and she said oh look she's a nurse she can look at it and oh, I was like dear. oh I can look at it I'm actually a doctor and she was like <laughs> oh I'm so sorry and I'm like it's okay I get it That's I mean it's just it, it is funny? it is yeah I mean I've gotten it my whole life like people don't expect <laughs> that's just wrong I know, you know as many a, female doctors as I know male doctors yeah so. well actually females are becoming the majority in medical schools I think it's something like 54% of medical students right better, now are female better bedside manner yeah, yeah. I mean, I, not. I, I think it's it. It varies from person to person, I, but I, I think that women tend to be maybe more instinctively nurturing and caring. loving yeah. and caring and motherly. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I know this is kind of waxing philosophical here, but I think women sort of learn to grin and bear it through pain, and we've kind of been through suffering of yeah, you, you know, pass a bowling ball, PMS, and yeah, you babies try that and all that. Yeah. We, we're comfortable with uh, with. Ouch. occasionally seeing yeah. blood i mean there, there, there are things time. there are things that we get used to so i think that women make fantastic doctors my but kid was 10 pounds too. so, so I like 10 to, pounds oh my i gosh. like to ask this question what's the i think we asked last time but uh is there what's the newest technology on the horizon that uh that you think is gonna you know change the world of dermatology the newest technology wow that there's you'd like oh to gosh. get into i mean what's, what's being talked about there's always so much that's coming out so um right now a technology that is not n necessarily new, new, but we are is sort of new to our practice is all therapy, which is using ultrasound technology to lift and tighten the skin. So it basically allows the skin as it's beginning to sag and lose its elasticity. Oh yeah, I it have allows that problem. it to kind of <laughs> yeah. It it really helps over a very natural process over a three month period from the time that you do your one session. Um, slowly but surely, kind of lifts everything back. So we're getting people getting a nice brow lift and neck lift. Um, the, the decollete area looks a lot more smooth. So that is something that we're really starting to see and do more of. And, you know, I think just in general, the, the newest thing that I've become really interested in is not necessarily the whole revolution of 
let's make everyone look plastic. Let's like make everybody's right. lips look huge yeah. and let's really like make that. it big, big, big. I don't big. like it either. It's not really what I enjoy doing. I'm a physician and I've been a, I've been a medical doctor and surgeon for, you know, a long time. And cosmetics, I, I treat it very much medically because to me it's restoration and maintenance of architecture. So we all have anatomy that we're born with. And over time, our skulls are shrinking and our fat pads are going away and our collagen and elastin are changing. So everything that was sort of designed, if, if you will, to you know sit and look a certain way slowly but surely with time, it's just... It's just starting to change. And, and it so sucks. I hate it. It does. Gra- but you know sucks. what? But you know what? I <laughs> think if, so many if you can you help do. people understand it objectively that, hey, all it is is that you, you know, you've lost your deep malar fat pad. Let's just put a little bit of volume Watch back there to replace it. I know, right? <laughs> and fight words. Yeah. Exactly. Excuse but if, if we can if we can help people maintain that architecture, then we can take five, ten years off and keep you that way. So Most I would say Most people don't think I'm eighty. What what about the <laughs> What about seventy five? What about the um, the what do you call that from the you know the they had that whole thing with the you know the ingredients from the placenta you put that in the face and stuff like that they uh, you know from yes. baby cells originally yes is, might help me with this what stem is it cell. yeah placental stem, stem cells cell. yeah, yeah yeah all of that yeah I mean, so do you do that technology I don't do that so I'm kind of waiting for a few more studies to come out for yeah that it's because new, it's new you know it's real you know it's very new so and I that's think, what I love about you is that you test stuff there's so many med spas out there and different doctors that have med spas and what i've noticed is a lot of things don't work a lot of lasers a lot of treatment yeah. and so i love that you want testing you want to make sure that it's right because once some of these doctors buy these lasers it's a lot of money it is and they're kind of stuck with them if they yeah. don't work yeah well i i would say just in general i've had a very sort of traditional western medical education and in, and in, in medicine it, we practice evidence-based medicine so i don't want to advocate for anything that doesn't have good science behind it so i'm kind of waiting like five yeah, ten years not necessarily but i want to see the studies and i want to really kind of look into it i did some work with stem cells and growth factors at the nih and so i'm kind of interested in this subject a lot i right. think the idea is fantastic but what i would worry about is whether those growth factors could have the risk of turning on potential cancer formation yeah. so i think that that's the, they don't the figure controversy. that stuff out until 10 years right. down the road or so exactly so we just don't know when we're turning Oops. Back on, the but there's still dies. so much natural mm-hmm. stuff. So I'm gonna have you do the skin pen. So how many needles did you say is on it? Oh, quite oh, is a few. Is it the <laughs> pen or the roller one? It, it, there's there are rollers, laser, right? but ours is a is a pen. And, yep, it's yeah, a pen. Is it like a laser? Pen. Um, it, it is similar in its effect as a laser, but there's no energy source that is like being pulsed into the skin. It's actually, yeah. the needles are actually introducing the injury to the skin instead of a laser beam. Yeah. And then so, the body's healing itself by producing new collagen, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so the, natural, the results that's are what I very nice. Try. Yeah. And we Especially do do PRP. This. So PRP is basically taking advantage of our body's own ability to heal itself. And so we draw your blood and spin it down and just take out the components that are involved in wound healing. So um, the growth factors, the nutrients and the platelets, and then we'll microneedle and then put that over the face. So it's, it's as natural as you can get because it's your so own you're putting body. your own stuff on your there. own stuff. Right. So yeah. I'm sure people are probably asking like the difference. Like for me, I'm very interested in that because, you know, I like everything natural. Totally. If I can possibly do it. Right. So what how many treatments do you have to do? How long is the treatment? And do you have any idea just off the top of your head pricing for microneedling? Yeah. So it depends on whether we're doing it with or without PRP. And it depends on the series and What's package. PRP, stand for? PRP is platelet rich plasma, which is the thing we talked about where right. you draw your blood and spin it down. Right. So. So usually results from that, uh, you need normally between four and six sessions to get really awesome results. Okay. Um, and it depends and how many, on if we're how doing... many, like once a year or... No, well, you, we, the series is usually spaced once every four to six weeks or so. Okay. And then you do that series. So if you do one, it'll still be great. But if our goal, we're, we're very much like results driven. So mm. if we're looking for an actual notable, sustainable outcome, you got to do a series with microneedling. Okay. So that's one of the advantages of laser. You said how many? Four to six? Usually four to six. With okay. laser, you can kind of get that same result in two to three sessions. Mm. Oh, so, But some people, the laser, you're not a good candidate depending does, on your Does skin. your practice have any specials going on? I mean, do you do that? Do you come on in? We're going to make you look younger. I mean, maybe somebody doesn't have a skin issue, but they just want to look younger. Can you come in and just like, hey, show me what you can do? Absolutely. So to, to answer your question, we do what well, everything we do is cosmetic consultation based. So if someone wants to come in and just kind of learn, get an overview of this is this is what's bugging me. What can I do about it? We just have people come in and schedule a consultation, either with myself or one of our other PAs or estheticians. We've got a great group of us That's there. Cool. 
And um, we'll just give you a good assessment of everything and help yeah. figure out what your Ooh. goals are and what we think we can do. But we are we'll we have a bunch of tools in our toolbox. So there's a lot that we can do depending on what the person's needs are. And tell us your website before we uh, run out of time again here. Sure. It's <laughs> www.legacydermatology.com. And Kent? Emotodallas.com and uh, soon to be uh, ChefKentRathbun.com and uh, all the Facebook and Instagram stuff. And come on down. I'm, I'm coming tonight. I'm going to talk. We're going. I'm jealous. <laughs> you guys have football game, so I can't go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Carmine Ledestri of Visual Image Photography. If you need any food photography or any dermatology photography, I'm kidding. <laughs> any type of business photography or videography production, we have our drone license. We have a lot of fun. We determine what you need. And we go from there. And Jen, where can well, people see the show? Well, one, I wanted to say getting my Botox from Dr. Jennifer Deramsey is on my website. So you can actually Who's see that at, yes, under video. So the Jennifer Sheehan yeah. you'll see the digital magazine, you'll see all the radio shows. And then under video, her doing my Botox, which I did want to mention, there aren't very many doctors that still inject Botox. So do you do you have other people also injecting or are you the only one that eject, injects at your practice? Um, so I do, and then my PAs and my estheticians do as well. Yeah. Okay, but so but if somebody wanted just you to oh, do yeah. it as a sure. doctor, sure. so very few doctors inject anymore. Is and that so right? that's really great that you're Ooh, still doing yeah, that, so course. they can request. Well, that. it's delegated a lot here. Let's not forget to vote for us. Huh? Tell them about yeah. that. Oh yeah. So what is the website? It's uh, KVGI Radio. And uh, you can go on there, and there's a button to press to vote for radio shows. And Jennifer, uh, you know, is on there, and I'm on there. And there's six or seven little things, and you can vote every day. Absolutely. So we need your vote. So we will see you all next Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for Thanks, joining Ken. us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank you. us. And we're out. All right, hold your seats. We're going to take a photo right here, and then we'll go to the step and repeat. Let me stop the uh, okay. camera. Was that an hour? Yeah. That went fast. <laughs> that was fast. It was right. Yeah, that was fast. Oh, yeah.